and thank you for joining me as I discuss my periodontal assessment project. My patient today is Kim Marks. She is a 22-year-old female, Caucasian with an English and German background. She is currently a senior attending the University of North Florida, where she is studying to be an elementary school teacher. She serves as the events chairman of her sorority, Alpha Chi Chi, and she also lives with her sorority sisters on campus in the Greek dormitories. Kim is suffering from celiac disease and bulimia. For celiac disease, she is taking calcium actinate, taking two tablets with each meal. Some contraindications may be allergic to the ingredients within the medication, and any special considerations may be hyperglycemia. An oral effect of this medication is xerostomia. For her condition, bulimia, she is taking Prozac. She is taking this 60 milligrams a day in the morning. This may increase suicidal thoughts and behaviors. Contraindications to the medication do include taking Pimazine or Thiazidine and have used a MAO inhibitor in the last 14 days. An oral effect with this medication is also xerostomia. Here we have Kim's periodontal assessment. As you can see, she does present with general bleeding throughout the dentition. She does have localized areas of some five to eight millimeter pockets on the posterior region for those molars. She does present with fours and fives um, in the premolar, premolar area and a general two to three in the anterior areas of the dentition. As you can see on number four, she does have a clinical attachment of a three. And on number five, she has a clinical attachment of a number four. On number 14, she has a clinical attachment of a three. And on 31 and 30, she has a clinical attachment of a four and a five. Now on number 30, on the buckle, she does have a class one furcation. For Kim's AAP periodontal classification, she does have plaque-induced gingivitis. She also presents with a generalized chronic periodontitis, which is moderate with the three to four clinical attachment levels and some areas of the severe with the five millimeter clinic attachment level. For her periosystemic disease, it is an immune disease. And for the perio deformity of her condition, she does have the class one furcation on the facial number 30, like we had shown in the previous slide. And overall, the patient presents with plaque-induced gingivitis caused by inadequate biofilm removal, insufficient dental visits, acid exposure to the enamel surfaces from purging, and a lack of oral home care. Patient has localized chronic periodontitis in the posterior region of the maxilla and the mandible associated with clinical attachment loss and probing depths up to eight millimeters. Here we have Kim's ADA periodontal case type. Kim is a class three, which is moderate periodontitis, generalized, the probing depths are five to six millimeters. She does present with bleeding, recession, and the class one furcation. As far as her radiographs, as we will soon see, she does have alveolar bone loss, three to four millimeters below this EJ, horizontal and vertical bone loss, four to three millimeter clinical attachment level, and the furcation. She also presents with a localized class 4, which is severe periodontitis. With severe periodontitis, that means that the area is less than 30%. There is 7 in higher probing depths. She does have the bleeding and the localized recession. She also has that horizontal and vertical bloom loss with up to a 5 millimeter clinical attachment loss and the furcation. In general, the patient presents with generalized bleeding and inflammation throughout the dentition caused and associated with gingivitis and slight enamel erosion on the lingual surfaces due to the acid from frequent purging. Chronic, chronic moderate to severe periodontal disease with general 2 to 4 millimeter pocketing with localized 5 to 7 millimeter pocketing in the posterior region on the dentition. Localized class 1 frication on the buccal aspect in number 30. Slight to moderate attachments, loss on the facial number 2, number 14, number 30, and number 31. Radiographic findings support evidence of moderate crystal changes in the alveolar bone repositioning between the 3 to 5 
below the CEJ in localized areas and a class 1 frication on number 30. The gender description for Kim is that she does have generalized and localized descriptions, which we will go into soon. As far as the distribution, she does have what is affected is the free ginger, the attached gingiva, and the papillary. The severity is moderate, and the quality of the gingiva color is a dark pink to bright red, and the dark red to cyanotic. Now, the dark red is going to be more of the localized area. As far as the gingiva contour, we have both areas that are generalized and localized. Once again, the free gingiva, the attached gingiva, and the papillary are affected. The severity is a moderate to severe. The quality is margins are rolled, rounded, festoon, receding. Now the receding is what is found more of a localized area. For the generalized, we will see a lot of rolled and rounded. The quality as far as the papilla is punched out and bulbous. And those are more of generalized. The consistency of the gingiva is once again for the distribution affecting the free agenda and the attached, more of a moderate severity, and we will see soft and spongy along with swollen for the consistency. The texture is a generalized affecting more of the free gingiva that is moderate and it is shiny, and it does still have its stippling. Overall, the gingival color appears dark with pink with localized areas of a deep red, Gingival contour presents as generalized rolled and rounded margins with localized areas of festoon margins in facial recession. Margins also present with localized papilla that are bulbous, giving a generalized spongy and swollen consistency. Gingival surface's texture presents as shiny and stippled. Now this slide will go ahead and combine all three of our assessment statements. Once again, um, Kim does have bulimia and celiac disease. She is a general case type 3, a localized case type 4. Her AAP classification is that she presents with plaque-induced gingivitis caused by an adequate biofilm removal, insufficient dental visits, acid exposure to enamel surfaces from purging, and a lack of oral home care. The patient has localized chronic periodontitis in the posterior region of the maxilla and the mandible associated with the clinical attachment loss and probing depths up to 8 millimeters. Her ADA case type is that she presents with a generalized bleeding and inflammation throughout the dentition associated with gingivitis and slight enamel erosion on the lingual surfaces due to acid from frequent purging from being bulimic. She has chronic to moderate Chronic moderate to severe periodontal disease with general 2 to 4 millimeter pocketing with localized 5 to 8 millimeter pocketing in the posterior region of the dentition. Localized class 1 frication on the buccal aspect of number 30. Slight to moderate attachment loss on the facial surfaces of number 2, number 14, number 30, and 31. Radiographic findings support evidence of moderate crystal changes in the alveolar bone repositioning between 3 to 5 millimeters below the CEJ in localized areas and a class 1 frication on number 30. The gingival description is that the gingival color appears dark pink with localized areas of deep red. Gingival contour presents as generalized rolled and rounded margins with localized areas of festoon margins and facial recession. Margins also present with localized papilla that are bulbous, giving a generalized spongy and swollen consistency. Gingival surface texture presents as shiny and stippled. The first image we have is a radiographic image. Here we can see horizontal bone loss along with some vertical bone loss on the mandible. We also have horizontal bone loss on the maxilla in the posterior region. Now on the the mandible, we do see the initial class 1 furcation. And on the maxilla, we have on those premolars areas of 3 to 4 millimeters below the CEJ. In this gingival description, we do have some recession on the mandible, along with, as you can see, the color being a deep red with areas of a lighter pink. The contour of the papilla, as we can see, is more bulbous and punched out. And then we also do have some flattening towards the top of the papilla. 
Now on the maxillary, we can see that the texture is shiny and stippled, along with having some rolled and festoon margins around those upper teeth. In this image here, we do have a brighter red, and the uh, contour for the margins are still rolled with the consistency of a spongy and swollen, but the texture is shiny and stippled. Some of the contouring for the papilla is flatted and blunted right at the tips, and we do have a localized area of some crater papilla. The color in for this gingiva is still red, but we see some areas of a lighter red to a pink. The texture, once again, is shiny and stippled, the consistency being swollen and spongy. For some of the contouring, it's once again some of the punched out papilla that's more bulbous with rolled and festooned margins. And the brighter red, we do see more on those rolled margins um, in the uh, interior aspect. In this last image, we continue to see the pink and red coloring for the gingiva with those rolled margins, texture stippled and shiny, consistency spongy and swollen with bulbous and punched out papilla and some localized recession. In this last gingival image, we continue to see the pink and red coloring for the gingiva also, the rolled margins for the contour, texture being shiny and stippled, the consistency has continued to be spongy and swollen. We do have bulbous and punched out papilla, along with localized areas of recession. And then on the maxillary, we do have areas that are flattened and blunted for the papilla. Here we present Kim's Dental Hygiene Night Diagnosis. Once again, she is a generalized case type 3, a localized case type 4. Her prognosis is fair. The rationale for this is that due to her moderate severity of her oral condition and based on the patient's compliance, the final outcome will be determined. The outcome is having a healthy oral cavity and dentition. We want to arrest the gingivitis and progression of periodontitis due to plaque removal, limiting acid attacks, and oral home care. Some of our therapeutic goals, as far as the short term, is to arrest the gingivitis, limit the acid exposure on the enamel, remove subgingival and supragingival calculus and plaque, stop the progression of periodontal disease, start home care regimen, and make a tray for fluoride home care treatment. In the long term, we would possibly like to place porcelain restorations on the surfaces where the enamel has been severely eroded to do a nutritional analysis and more thorough home care. Some modifiable risk factors include adequate treatment for bulimia, acid erosion exposure on the enamel, nutritional counseling, home care instructions, and to improve the serostomia that is caused by her medications. Some not modifiable risk factors include the medications that she's using to help with her bulimia and the required dietary supplements for her celiac disease. Next, we will go over the treatment plan for Kim. As you will see, we do have our ADA codes and the procedures. As far as the examinations, we will do a DO150, the Comprehensive Initial Evaluation, and we will also do the DO140, the Limited Oral Exam, which is more of a problem focused. As far as treatment, and these will not all be done the same day, which we will describe later on, but her overall treatment will include the D4355, which is a preliminary debridement, a D4341, periodontal scaling and root planning, four or more teeth per quadrant, a D4381, which is localized delivery of antimicrobial agents via controlled release vehicle into disease circular fluid per tooth, D4921, gingival irrigation per quadrant, D4910, periodontal maintenance. As far as prevention, we will include the D1210, which is topical sodium fluoride. And as far as miscellaneous procedures, D1330, which is the oral hygiene instruction. 
Kim's treatment will be broken into several appointments. The first appointment being the first exam, the D0140, the limited oral exam problem focused. We will then proceed with the D355 preliminary debridement. Once that is completed on another one, we will do a second exam, which is the comprehensive initial evaluation. We will then proceed with the four areas of scaling and replanning. So that's the D4341. We will also provide her with D4381, the localized delivery of antimicrobial agents, and D4921, gingival irrigation, which is per quadrant. Once all the scaling and root planning appointments have been completed, and we bring Kim back for her maintenance appointments. Now her maintenance appointments, she will be listed under D4910, which is the periodontal maintenance. At that appointment, we will also provide her with D4381, more localized delivery of antimicrobial agents, and D4921, gingival irrigation per quadrant. And for prevention, we will pr provide her with D1210, topical sodium fluoride, and D1330, oral hygiene instruction. The instruments that we will be using are the Gracie's, the Standard, the After 5, the Mini, and Anna Patterson's. The Shank Rigidity would be Standards and the Rigids. And the rationale for using these instruments is because she will present with light to moderate calculus, also fine scaling, and then using the finishing correct. We would like to use our Standard Rigid Scaler, and that is for the moderate to calculus removal. Here we have some home care recommendations for our patient. As far as the prescription dental aids, we would like her to obtain 1.1% neutral sodium fluoride gel, Clempro 5000 toothpaste, and Periamed 0.63 stainless fluoride rinse. For over-the-counter dental aids, the floss, Biotin dry mouth gentle rinse for the serostomia, which is caused by her medication, and a water flosser. For tooth brushing, we like her to use the Bass Modified Technique with an Oral-B Pro 6000. And as far as special instructions, do include brush the teeth and gums after every meal, focus 30 seconds in each quadrant for a total of two minutes brushing time. Now when the pressure light on the brush does light up, to release the grip and pressure on the teeth. For the toothpaste, once again the Clem Pro 5,000 toothpaste, which is a prescription. If she's unable to get a prescription at the moment, then we do recommend Colgate Enamel Health Sensitivity Relief because that is over the counter. For floss and floss aids, like her to use a wax floss and a water flosser. For special instructions, to seesaw the floss gently between the teeth, hock the floss to one side of the tooth and then the other side of the opposing tooth. For the water flosser, to use room temperature water and the water flosser if the cold water does create any type of sensitivity. And when you're first starting to use a water flosser, to use it on the lowest setting. You can always increase the setting once needed. For interdental aids, we have the floss reacher and a tongue cleaner. For the floss reacher, that is to use on the posterior teeth. And for the tongue cleaner, to start the back of the tongue and pull forward when using it. And then you can always rinse the tongue cleaner off and reuse. For mouth rinses, we did recommend the Periomed 0.63 stainless fluoride or rinse. In the special instructions is to mix 1 eighth of an ounce of the solution to water for a total of 1 ounce. Swish half of the solution for 30 seconds, spit out, then rinse the second half for 30 seconds and spit out. For the fluoride, we recommend the 1.1% neutral sodium fluoride gel. Special instructions being to use this at bedtime to apply a thin bead of the gel to the trays and wear for at least one minute. After use, expectorate and do not eat, drink, or rinse for 30 minutes. Now some products to avoid are foods or drinks that contain a lot of sugar and toothbrush bristles that are harder than medium or firm. On this slide, we will discuss her nutritional analysis. Once again, she does suffer from celiac disease 
and bulimia. What we would like to add to her diet is fruits, vegetables, meat and poultry, fish and seafood, dairy, beans and nuts. Now due to the celiac disease, um, Kim is unable to eat anything that really has a wheat, barley or rye processed carbohydrates and this is because the uh, those foods do make them sick and what we also would like for them to omit then from the food that they eat is most baking flours, processed fats and added sugars. Some more foods to avoid in the diet it's beer, ale, and malt beverages, pasta, bread, cookies, cereals, trans fats, canola oil, bottled condiments, and sauces. Now, some of these ingredient or food items can be gluten free, but we just need to make sure to really read the food and nutritional labels. As far as supplements, there are going to include vitamin D3, up to 5,000 IU daily, a gluten free multivitamin and L-glutathione and to take 5 milligrams a day. And this concludes my case study presentation on a generalized class 3 with a localized class 4 patients. Thank you so much for listening.